Obviously, this has been all over the news here in the UK. It's concerning a young lady called Sarah Everad. Everad? Ever, ever odd, ever odd, ever read, ever odd. Bless me, sorry, bless me. My condolences. Uh, body found in Woodlands confirmed as that of missing woman. Um, so of course she went missing uh, a few days ago, and obviously people immediately started thinking of the worst. People then started to come a bit, a bit hopeful. Uh, little clues were left here and there, but then no, no kind of. Um, no one was really arrested or anything. So it just it was just bleak, and it? it was just bleak. But again, this opened up this very interesting conversation around men and women interactions male and female interactions how men treat women late at night um the safety of women when they're parading on the streets and shit walking home going places and it's kind of got people in a bit of a tizzy so let's go and read the article itself this is how do you pronounce the name is it sever ever ever odd ever odd sever ever odd body found in woodland confirmed that as a missing woman it says a body found in police in the Woodlands on Wednesday has been confirmed as that of Sarah Averad. The 33-year-old marketing executive disappeared as she walked home in South London last week. A serving member of the Met remains in custody, having been held on suspicion of Miss Everard's kidnap and murder. In another development, organisers of a vigil of Miss Everard lost a legal challenge at the High Court to police against the ban of the event. Organisers claimed that there had been an absolute about faced by police who told them that Saturday's reclaimed the streets event in Clapham would not now be permitted due to the coronavirus lockdown having been previously said that the gathering could go ahead very interesting isn't it right we had this is where sometimes i think in terms of pr and in terms of sentiment in the country this is where we kind of go a bit wrong they allowed the blm protest to happen during a lockdown. was it during a lockdown or during a uh, restricted movement i don't know which one it was but either way we shouldn't been gathering in big groups like the outdoors but we did during blm protests you know during the summer um there were some anti-lockdown things happening too, for some reason, remember? Those were well, those clashes BLM too? Those clashes where there was an iconic picture of that dude carrying a guy on his shoulder that, you know, previously tried to hit him. Do you remember that? I'm not sure if it's the same thing, but regardless, these are the kind of things that will unnecessarily stoke some racial conflict in the country that's already, you know, festering some real ill intent towards certain people in certain communities. You, they should just let this this march go ahead really they should have let it go ahead in the designated area let them have their say let them gather in you know in solidarity um exchange some stories you know whatever it may be have a shoulder to cry on that would have been really powerful but not allowing it and you allow the other thing it's just ugh, god damn it he continues here. Earlier speaking outside of Scotland Yard, new assistant commissioner Nick F. Gave, F. Grave gave a televised update on the police inquiry. He said, as you know, on Wednesday evening, detectives investigating disappearance of Sever Everard um, discovered a body secreted in a woodland in Kent. The body has been recovered and formal identification procedure has now been undertaken. Miss Everard was last seen on the 3rd of March, walking alone down the main road in Clapham. Clapham to Kent, bro. God damn it. At 9.30 uh, p.m., with police saying that it was unclear whether she reached her home in Brixton, which is not that far, I assume, isn't it? Clapham to Brixton is probably like a, what, a half an hour walk or something, or maybe less than that. Um, Mr. F. Grave said that specialist uh, officers remained in constant contact with Miss Everett's family and the hundreds of officers were working around the clock to establish the full sequence of her disappearance. I know that the public feel deeply hurt and angry and I speak on behalf of all colleagues when I say that we are too horrified, um, he said. God damn it. Throughout last week, searches have been carried out in Clapham, where Miss Everett was last seen, as well as at home in Deal in the woodland of Ashford. On Tuesday, the Met officer was arrested on Kent on suspicion of Miss Everett's kidnapped and was later re-arrested on suspicion of her murder. The man who is in his 40s and works in the Met's pharmaceutical uh, paramilitary and diplomatic protection command was taken to hospital on Thursday suffering from head injuries he sustained while alone in his cell. He was treated, discharged and returned to the police station where he was being held after application to extend his detention was granted by magistrates. Now, allegedly, so according to Twitter, people are saying that he got beaten up in his cell by his other um, co-workers, I guess, colleagues in the police department. Another is alleging that he tried to bash his head against a wall to obviously um, expire himself. Who knows? Um, it continues here. A woman in her 30s who was arrested on suspicion of assisting the offender has been released on bail until mid-April. The Met is facing an invest. Oh yeah, that's his wife, isn't it? I'm assuming, right? The Met is facing an investigation by a police officer watchdog into the handling of the separate investigation of incident of exposure against the officer. The Independent Office for Police Conduct, the IPOC, is look is to look at whether the officers responded appropriately after the Met received two complaints that the man had exposed himself to a fast food restaurant in South London on February 28th, three days before. 
Jesus Christ, the police was exposing himself. Bless her, man. Beautiful lady, man. Absolutely horrendous. Um, so, of course, this is putting up some really interesting conversations, isn't it? Around how men and women interact on the streets late at night, especially more so the actions of men towards women. And it kind of lends, I think, itself a little bit to a situation that occurred with, you know, allegedly between Meghan Markle and um, Piers Morgan, which has led them to the point where he's kind of made it his mission to basically shit on her in public at every given occasion, right? Um, if you believe what you see online, you believe his, you know, a, a story that he kind of shared out there, supposedly they were involved in some sort of relationship or he was caught in her. It obviously didn't work out. And because of that, he's always been bitter and kind of aggrieved by it. So he's kind of made it his mission to kind of stick it up, you know, stick it up her or whatever or show her who's boss, whatever it is, right? He's obviously got some sort of axiogram, some sort of personal grudge. Um and it's very common, I would say, that sort of reaction men have towards women when they get rejected. Because that's the one thing that I think no other sex kind of feels maybe as viscerally as men do. Rejection hurts, isn't it? Obviously, it's not excusing what he did. Of course, the guy's a piece of shit. You know, the police officer in custody and Piers Morgan, they are, those guys are not my friends. But there is something about rejection that does something to a guy. Because I know I've, I've been through it myself. When someone rejects you that you're clearly trying to pursue in a romantic way, especially when you're clearing your intentions. I think if you're a scumbag and you're trying to be her friend and you're trying to creep around the back door, that's when, you know, I've got no real patience for you. But when you set out your intentions quite clearly um, in the hope that maybe it could be reciprocated and it doesn't, it can really destroy you, for real. It's probably worse than a breakup for some reason. Don't ask me why, I don't know. Maybe it's male pride, male ego. We also have this tendency, which you kind of saw a little bit in the Joker, where he kind of worked up this idea that he was in a relationship and dating this young lady when he wasn't his neighbour, right? And it obviously ended in tra tragic circumstances, allegedly based on what we basically see in the film. But we, we men have a instant, I don't know why we tend to do it, but we do have a, we do have a nature sometimes to fill in the gaps with our own narrative. So we could be talking to somebody and because of, and we could basically be interpreting whatever they say differently from how they intended it to be received, or sometimes even not even intended to receive at all, right? We could take an LOL, a little wink face emoji, a couple of dots, a tongue out emoji. We could take that to be many, many, many things, and they can get our mind racing. And then as soon as our reality doesn't mess up with our mind, we completely freak out. Obviously, not to this extent, but that's where I can understand the trigger can come from. You have to look at some groups of dudes who have that thing where they'll heckle or, you know, kind of to try and get the attention of a girl on the street she says no because either she's not interested she's embarrassed she's scared she doesn't want to talk to whatever whatever the reason is she doesn't want to talk to you at that moment and then a the boy takes it as an opportunity to shit on her tell her you're ugly throw insults you know just make her feel really uncomfortable whatever it may be as a way to kind of boost yourself up because that's what usually happens and if you're a bully if you're somebody that's insulting people without reason it usually comes from a point of hurt you're usually hurting yourself you're usually something in you that's empty somewhere you know, in the history books, you've been hurt by somebody in, in a very bad circumstance and you want to take it out on the other person. You kind of see whoever hurt you in that person. Cool, get it. But of course, it's not their fault and not their responsibility to kind of, you know, be the, what's that thing called? Be the punching bag for your emotions. You know, you should leave that in the gym. So that's one thing. But then there's also this weird thing going around with this Wales, this government in Wales or this politician talking about how men should, should be in curfew and not be allowed in the streets after 6 p.m. It's like, let's relax, right? Let's relax. In general, most guys don't do what this police officer is being alleged of doing, right? Most guys are pretty much normal. They're not going to go out there and murder because if it was the case, then the, you know, the, the numbers of people getting murdered in the streets would be astronomical. But unfortunately, because of the size dif differential and because of the, the strength differential, there is, is an unfortunate, there is an unfair balance whenever a man and a woman get involved in some kind of altercation. It's always unfairly weighted on to the guy, even if he doesn't know what he's doing, right? Just because of the size and the strength of all this sort of malarkey. So that kind of puts women at a disadvantage. So for, for as much as there is a reason and a point to say, hey, men should kind of police other men and be like, hey, don't do something to that. Cool, we can do this. But it also has to be an acceptance that it's a problem and issue that both parties need to come to the middle and obviously have a conversation about how to deal with it properly. Fair enough, right? There is a definitely legit reasons why women would be like, you know what, I don't want anyone to catcall me. Like, don't, never. Just leave me alone. If I'm walking down the street, there's no reason to invade my privacy, to whistle at me, to say I look nice. I don't need your compass. I don't need your approval. I don't need your validation. Piss off, fuck off. There is every reason for a woman to say that. But on the other token, for a dude, it's hard to kind of figure out 
where you should go, like what approach you should use if you are interested in somebody, especially somebody you don't know from Adam, right? Someone, a complete stranger. Because for all the, for all the criticism being leveled around dudes who kind of go and approach women in the street, there's also the equal amount of criticism towards guys who go and try and get help from pickup artists, right? Pickup artists are sleazy and dirtbags, whatever they are. But at the heart of it, there generally is a need and there definitely is a desire for men to learn about how to speak to women, how to speak to somebody they're interested in, in a way that's going to give them the best possible chance to get involved in a romantic or sexual relationship. Men need that help because quite clearly, a lot of men don't know how to do it, right? Because of all the horror stories you hear, a lot of men are pretty crap at talking to women, right? They don't have game. They're completely hopeless. Um, so, which is why you hear a lot of people, especially in my friendship group, majority of people have either hooked up with somebody via a medium like t Tinder that kind of, you know, takes away that awkwardness of the face-to-face -face interactions and does away with uh, the women feeling a little more uncomfortable because you get a chance to kind of block, delete, move on, whatever you need to be. Or usually most people that are in long-term relationships have found their, you know, partner via work because you spend eight hours a day there, five days a week, you get to learn somebody, know somebody intimately or via like friendship circles right you go with people you feel more comfortable maybe your guard's a bit down more down bloody blah, blah 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 but it's very rare these days that people are advocating for somebody to go in the street and just meet people it's not something that everyone wants for some for obviously some really legit reasons because i guess it's annoying if you're a fairly attractive woman even if you're just a not attractive woman having dudes that you don't know constantly interrupting your day trying to talk to you and there must be something, again, because that's something that guys don't think about in a lot as well. It must be super odd if you're a woman to have a guy lusting after you. Not, imagine, I think it must be different if you're going out because there's a part of you that's like, you know, you're looking cute. So that validation that you're getting can sometimes be nice. Of course, I'm assuming towards the end of the night it can get boring. But just day to day, right? You're popping out to the streets. You've got your crappy pajamas on you're looking like shit you don't have makeup on your hair's all fucked up and the guy's like bringing that kind of sexual lusty energy towards you it must really be gross to be like oh go away you know what i mean All right so there's always a, obviously a time and a place but it's just difficult to kind of figure out where that time and place is how it should be done and of course, like I said, not every girl's going to be receptive to it because some girls are within their right to tell you to go and fuck off. But also, unfortunately, you can't control how some dudes react because some dudes are psycho. Some dudes will just hear fuck off, hear somebody snickering on a, on a train or on a bus and just flip out, right? And then again, like I said, um, the advantage for some reason, for unfairly, is always going to be in the hands of the dude because he's bigger and stronger. So you're putting yourself in a weird position. So that's why you can never tell to a girl, really, you can't really tell them, hey, you shouldn't be speaking real mad wild to a guy because why not? I don't want you to talk to me, leave me alone. But you also, it's difficult to kind of police all men because all men are completely different, right? Some guys can just take it on the chin and, you know, have a laugh about it like I do, right? When you get rejected on the street. I remember one time, <laughs> talking, trying to talk to a girl. She's like, ugh. And she turned around and it was like super loud, right? <laughs> and I died. I was laughing straight away. Obviously, most of it was embarrassment, but I was laughing like, wow. Like, message received, right? <laughs> She's like, ugh. Like loud, like oh my soul, everything. But I just went to the ground to swallow me up whole. And I remember walking past a shop or no something. It must have been a hotel. I don't know where it was. And I guess one of the security guards must have like seen me go up to an approach her, run up the street, da da da. And he saw me walk back, obviously with a walk of shame, and just said, "Hey, don't worry, bruv, man. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> next time, next time." That was the only sort of pep talk I got from some guy in the, in the door. That like, next time, next time, and that hurt. But again, it is what it is, isn't it? The game is the game. I'm 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 okay with it. I know I'm not always gonna flip in, you know. Uh, I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not always going to hit out of the park. But again, some guys just aren't like that, man. It's unfortunate. And we...